waves. Geek Vibes Live is rated G for Geek. It's hey, this is Matt Lesher. This is Phil Lamar. Hey, this is Robin Moore Taylor, a.k.a. the Penguin Gotham, and you are listening to Geek Vibes Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to an all-new episode of Geek Vibes Live. I'm your host, and I know it's been a while, but we are finally back for an all-new episode of Geek Vibes Live. Me and Thea have been on the airwaves. We've been doing reviews in between the time, but anyway, welcome. Uh, We have an all-new episode, like I said before. I don't know why I just repeated that, but uh, (laughs) let me introduce uh, my panel, starting off with Thea. What's going on, Thea? Hey, 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 hey. Um, I do want to say, Juwan, you forgot to say your name. Uh, you said, I'm the host. I did. And then that was... <laughs> so and for those I who did. are listening, this is our host, Juwan. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. That is me. Um, I, I don't know why I forgot to say my name, but you're absolutely correct. I did forget to say my name. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tia. Um <laughs> I that completely threw me off. I don't know why I just forgot that. Uh, also welcoming back. Feel like it's been a while, Dom. I don't like that, man. Uh, but welcoming back, Dom. What's going on, Dom? Yeah, I feel like that has been a while. It's good to be back. Uh, you know, busy times, busy things, but I'm here. I'm here. Absolutely, and I appreciate that from the both of you um, because I love doing the show with you guys. Um, and it kind of sucks when I'm not able to. So I'm glad we were able to get together for a Saturday episode of Geek Vibes Live. Um, all right. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, let, I, w- I want to start off with, because obviously I, I think we've been off the air for about almost three weeks now. So we have not with each other talked about the release photos of um, official release photos, not set photos of the Batmobile. We have not talked uh, that with each other, I do not believe. Tia, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, oh, you didn't correct me. All right, so I'm right. All right, <laughs> um, so, so let's start off with that. Um, Tia, I'm going to go to you first. What were your initial thoughts on the official look at um, Robert Pattinson's Batmobile? Oh, I really like it personally. Um, it's one of those things that when it first hit, Twitter, I didn't see it released by Matt Reeves. It was other people, obviously, releasing it, so part of me thought it was fan-made. Until then, I saw, oh, no, it was it's an official photo. I really like it, believe it or not. Um, it's just a cool look to me, and I thought, wow, I'm really getting sold on Robert Pattinson as Batman because he was in those photos as well. So just seeing him in the suit with the the Batmobile, for me personally, I feel like I've liked every iteration and, yes, even the Dark Knight trilogy iteration of the Batmobile. But I like that each Batman has its own style um, and – Clearly, this is, it looks like, almost looks like it's a throwback, but it's being a little practical as well. I just really like it. I'm excited to see everything in action, just seeing him have the Batmobile. And who knows, because this is supposed to be a younger Bruce Wayne, him really in the beginnings of being Batman, it could be something where this isn't always going to be his version of the Batmobile. It's just something that he has right now while in the first few years wearing the cape. So I'm really excited. I really liked it. I just thought that Matt Reeves is doing just some great promotional work. He's pretty much like, I know when the time comes that Warner Brothers is going to do the bare minimum so I'm just going to take this all upon myself. Yeah, I also I, – I, I want to say this, because a lot of people are, are, are doing the same thing, giving Matt Reeves a lot of credit for 
um, getting ahead of everything. Let me be very specific, and I don't know this for sure, so let me be a little less specific. I can almost guarantee you the only reason he is releasing everything that he is is so we don't go by set photos. Um, And let me be specific. We got that test footage of the Batman, like what uh, Pattinson looked like in in, in the mask and in the suit right before the set, uh, right before they started filming him in the suit or the stunt double in the suit. He didn't want that to be the first thing we saw. Batmobile. I can almost guarantee you I'm hearing maybe by the 16th is when they'll start shooting with the actual Batmobile on on set. He just kind of doesn't want set photos to be what we go off of, which, again, Tia, uh, is is what I said last time we were on air together. I said don't let set photos, because that creates a narrative. Don't let us create your narrative. You create the narrative. So you release it, and if people don't like it, people were never going to like it. Um, if people like it, then, you know, that those are the people that are being optimistic about our new Batman. Um, but this is very much so to do exactly what I told you was important for DC going forward, um, which is just create your own narrative. Let people know this is what it looks like. You like it, you like it, you don't. Well, you know, <laughs> you'll probably still be in the theater to see my movie anyway. Um, I, I, I didn't have any issues with it. I, I'm kind of vanilla on it really honestly it's more practical than the tumbler i hated the tumbler only because if you read batman comics it just never seemed like except for year one um where it was just all out war the tumbler is just the most unpractical car and the thing that made me the, the angriest Tia was a director telling me he wants a more uh realistic take on batman it then gives you the most unrealistic take on a Batmobile. Like, this car seems like the car Christian Bale should have had uh, rather than that big damn tank. Um, but no, my biggest issue with the Tumblr was the idea of, alright, you're, you're riding through the city. Someone should, like, hear that and just follow it back to wherever you're driving. Like, you can't cut cut tight corners in that. Yeah. That's why, if you guys remember, you never see the Tumblr really chasing anything it was more so of like all right this is where i'm going um rather than really ch- the one time he did chase someone the joker it crashed <laughs> he had to use the bike so I'm like, it was just not practical it's not a practical batmobile this looks very practical it also looks starterish um like he, like maybe this was his dad's old car that he took and revamped into a batmobile um Jeffrey Wright is what's hyping me the most. He keeps saying, wait till you hear it. And I'm like, hear it? <laughs> what the hell is it going to sound like? Like, what do you mean, wait till I hear it? Um, so that's getting me a little hype. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle. I mean, the photo is my, my phone background, um, only because I love how godly he looks <laughs> as Batman standing next to that Batmobile. Um, but, Dom, I, I'm going to pass it over to you. What were your initial thoughts on seeing – uh, our first official look at the Batmobile. I really liked it. I uh, I think it liked, uh, back to the last time we talked about some of the photos, it kind of adds to that kind of gritty um, take that I feel like they're taking with this aesthetic, um, with this muscle car, uh, added with like this motorcycle we've seen, and then the, the symbol on his chest. It just kind of looks like, uh, like you said, he's kind of taking what he has and is trying to, soup it up as much as possible um, because it looks kind of like a Ford GT or a Plymouth or Barracuda or something. I can't really tell what kind of car it is, but the engine in the back looks real mean. And I think that's something that the way that it looks could draw in people who not just like Batman, but ones who like, oh, this looks like a really good action movie. Um, because you don't put cars like that in a movie that's going to be weak because you can't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I was really excited to see it. Uh, they're, the way they're releasing the photos in a very ominous way with, like, fog and the red the red being bright, um, he's definitely creating a hype that's going to pay off, I believe, because um, not just that it's Batman, but when people see – a movie that looks this interesting already is definitely going to uh, <laughs> sell some tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing we know is Batman sells. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't really take much 
people are going to go see Batman regardless. Whether they like it is a conversation to be had, but they're going to see it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this this to me, it, it, it looks, like I said, very practical. Um, I am curious to see if that bike he was riding was a bat bike or was it just like a regular motorcycle he took from someone. Um, we just know Batman has uh, means of transportation. Um, this Batman doesn't have to worry about taking a bus or anything like that. Uh, I am curious, does this Batman have a bat plane? Um, there's just so many things that go into it. Um, but Tia, did you have anything else you wanted to add about, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the Batmobile? Oh. No, I, I like your idea of saying that what if the car was originally his father's that he kind of did up. That's what I was basically saying on my point is that it looks very much like a starter Batmobile and not say what he would have long term. Yeah, I mean, to me, honestly, I I don't have, I try not to have exact expectations on what I want the Batmobile to look like, only because I've only, I think they've only done a good job with the Batmobile once um, in all of its live action um, history, and I think that was Michael Keaton's uh, Batmobile is my favorite. Um, Finn's Batmobile was was beautiful to look at. I just felt like he didn't use it enough. But that's what happens when you don't have a solo Batman movie. Um, so you can't really see that much of the Batmobile in shared movies. Um, so, I mean, I, I didn't really develop that much of a uh, a like, a connection to that Batmobile. Um, and then it, not long after that, uh, <laughs> we heard he wasn't Batman anymore. So it was like, oh, well, yeah, I, I don't care anymore. Um, but yeah, th- this does have the feel, like you say, Tia, of a starter. Um, but I mean, if this is the Batmobile is going to look like going forward, I don't really hate the idea of it. Um, you know, just make it really cool. Uh, shoot. I mean, I've always been of the mindset of you could take a practical car and make it like a James Bond car and it could be like a Batmobile. Um, so, I mean, you know, we just saw the trailer of the, the new James Bond movie, how the headlights came down and, and uh, turrets, gun turrets came out of the, the front headlights. I'm like, stuff like that is super dope. Like, have the have the Batmobile do stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, we have really nothing else to go on. That's pretty much all we, we really got was a few shots of him in the Batmobile. Um, all right, so we're good to move on. Don, did you have anything else? No, no, I'm good. All right, let's move on. Um, I want to do this really quickly, Tia. You put it in there, so I kind of want to glance over it. I kind of need the media as a whole to do two favors for me. One, stop asking John Krasinski about Mr. Fantastic. He's not going to give you an answer either way. I mean, think about this. If he was Mr. Fantastic, like right now, like he had a handshake deal with Feige, he's going to come out at San Diego Comic-Con or D23, He's going to tell you no every time you ask him. Like, just, I need people to just realize that. Like, you're not going to catch him slipping one day where he's like, oh, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a... no. <laughs> okay? No. Because he knows that is the easiest way to get Feige to go, maybe we wait on Mr. Fantastic. And now I'm going to change my mind. Um, we need them to stop asking John Krasinski about Mr. Fantastic, even though I think we all can agree um, he is definitely, if uh, he's definitely going to, if not already is, by his pick for um, Mr. Fantastic. And the reason why I say that is if you read the current comics of uh, the Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic looks exactly like John Krasinski. Um, I mean, like, it looks like the guy sat John down and drew him for that comic. Um, and we also need the media to stop asking Ben Affleck questions about the Batman. I'm sick of it. It's difficult for me to get over losing him when I keep hearing him talk about it. I don't want to hear him talk about it anymore. He's done. He says he's done. We have a new Batman. I need us to move forward. Um, So my question is, Tia, I'll start with you. What has become more annoying? John Krasinski interviews about Mr. Fantastic or Ben Affleck interviews about a character he is no longer playing? Ben Affleck is them asking Ben Affleck is more annoying to me, honestly, uh, because John Krasinski 
hasn't played the character yet. So this is all speculation. And John Krasinski, according to a new interview with comicbook.com, has expressed that he would love to play the character. And they actually brought it up to him in that interview that the comics now are being drawn to look like him. So for me, I mean, granted, do I think it's necessarily news at this point? No, because literally every, uh, and including ourselves, I should say, but every outlet has covered, oh, John Krasinski says he would love to play the character. It's like, okay, it's not really news at this point because we all know now that he would love to play this character. But it's not annoying to me just because it's not like he's played the character yet. To me, what's annoying is Ben Affleck, not him in general, but uh, everyone asking him because, He's, you know, promoting this new movie, The Way Back. He's talking very candidly, opening up about his sobriety. And it seems like any, all anyone is interested in is asking him about Batman, asking him about Justice League. And this is something that happened a few years ago. As you said, we have a new Batman. And I think that this is a chapter that he may just want to close and move on with his life and just talk about the celebration of his sobriety, talk about projects moving forward, and all anyone can talk about is Batman. Ben Affleck was a very esteemed actor and director before he was Batman, and he's going to be after Batman, but it's just seems all people talk about is, oh, but, you know, tell us again how much you want the Snyder Cut to come out. And I thought what I will say in that one interview when I – really like Ben talking about is something that I think that Snyder Cut, Snyder Cult fans, whatever, Snyder Cut, whatever it's called, uh, they forget about is that Zack Snyder had a insanely tragic death in his family, which really attributed to him walking away. And Ben Affleck made sure to say that in his interview. It wasn't just, oh, I'll release the Snyder Cut. It's like, you know, he acknowledged that Zack Snyder went away because of this horrible event in his life. Um, And I think that that was important for him to say. It's kind of like, you know, and he did also, though, acknowledge that he would like to see Zack Snyder's vision. But it's like at this point, please stop asking Ben. Please stop asking Ben about, don't ask freaking Gail Godot and Patty Jenkins at their interviews and then get mad at them. It's like, stop asking people. It's gotten to the point where I, I get mad at reporters for asking. It's no longer doing your due diligence as a reporter. You're just being annoying. Um, I'll even go this far, uh, and I know this is really off topic, but it really grinds my gears. Um, is there was an interview with Scoot McNary for Narcos Mexico Season 2, and I forget who was interviewing him, but he even asked him about the Snyder Cut, and Scoot was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And it's like, at this point, it's like, <laughs> and it's like reporters stopping these people and just let them freaking, you know, talk about the movies that are actually coming out. So, that's my two cents, and I know I derailed a little, but this is how annoying it is to me about this freaking Snyder Cut shit. I will say this, though. Um, where I give reporters a little bit of slack is that I know for a fact. See, you know this for a fact. Dom, you know this for a fact. When we do our interviews, what's the first thing that the agents say? This is what I want you to talk about. Sometimes they say this is what I don't want you to talk about, right? We've all, all three of us have been through that, correct? So I'm mm-hmm. like, you would have to imagine Ben's publicist says to these guys, like, if he truly was tired of being asked about it, hey, don't ask me about the Batman. Um, and the fact that it seems like he doesn't say it kind of makes me think a part of him likes the idea of still being relevantly known um, for being Batman. And, you know, I mean, not a bad thing. You guys know how much I love Ben, and especially Ben as Batman. Um, But it's just one of those things to where it's like, when you do that, same thing as I told you guys. I don't blame the Snyder Cult fans. I honestly don't. I blame Zach. Zach feeds the Snyder Cult fans. 
Um, and I, fe- I feel as though he's very irresponsible in what he's doing because he's driving. He's splitting DC fans from Snyder Colt fans to actual DC fans. He is driving a wedge in between the two. When in all, re- uh, you know, in, in all, re- all of reality, what I don't think the Snyder Colt fans realize is his world is gone. It's gone. I mean, you saw it with Shazam. If you saw the Wonder Woman trailer, how bright it looked, it's gone. No one's saying, like, oh, no, like, Zach was, was you know, what I thought of when I made this movie. Like, no, it, it, it's gone. So I'm like, if he does drop this, you know, this, uh, you know, Justice League cut or Snyder cut or whatever, and it's great. That changes nothing. Like, the Justice League movie still happens. Uh, it's still what's going to be known as the theatrical release. So I'm like, Zack Snyder needs to stop fueling it. And until he does, the Snyder Cult fans, culpable as a lot of people would make them uh, seem to be, it's Zack leading it. And I think Ben needs to start telling people, like, hey, I worked damn hard on this A Way Back movie, or whatever it's called. Stop asking me about the Batman. Like, ask me more about this movie um, that has a personal... A personal take on it because I think in the movie it touches on um, on uh, alcoholism. So I'm like, this is something that I'm sure is very dear to him. He works very hard on. I heard nothing but good things about. So I'm like, if you're Ben, you have to start putting your foot down and telling them like, look, I don't want to talk about the Batman. Like it was cool years ago. It was cool maybe last year because um, there was no Batman. But once there was a new Batman, you should say, hey, any Batman questions you have. You probably ask Robert. You probably ask Matt Reeves. Those are your guys you asked about the Batman. I have nothing to do with it anymore. You yeah. were saying something to him? Well, I was just saying because you're right, like 100%. And it goes back to the interview with Patty Jenkins and Gail Godot. All they said was, I just want to talk about Wonder Woman 84. I don't want to talk about the freaking Justice League. And the Snyder Cult fans got all crazy. But it is, Zach is feeding them by constantly putting all this stuff out. And it's just, it's just ridiculous, man. I'm, I'm so tired of it. <laughs> I really yeah, am. no. I am too. And it doesn't help me at all. I just watched BVS again tonight, and I cried because I'm like, God, Ben was so perfect as Batman. And I'm like, I, I want to stop thinking about that, and I want to only focus on Robert. And it's hard to do so when every time I'm like, oh, let me see what Project Ben's, Ben's working on. And I watch an interview. He's talking about the Batman. I'm like, what, is this old? What, what is this? What am I watching? Um, but Dom, sorry, me and T have isolated ourselves. Um <laughs> What Sorry, what <laughs> seemingly is what seemingly is more annoying? Krasinski talking about a role that he does not have yet, or might not even ever have, in Mister Fantastic, or Ben clinging on to the good old days of BVS. Uh, so, uh, for me, I think like what I've been reading. For me, if I was Ben, I would feel very awkward to. Every th- every time that this conversation comes up, that he kind of has to mention or at least think about like this this the derailment of the movie started because Snyder had a loss in his family. That would be very annoying and awkward for me to have to always bring up and think about because you don't really want to talk about someone's family loss publicly on a you know every occasion that you're on in an interview or on TV. So I feel like that's probably the most annoying thing. Um, Cause I think that's something that I would avoid if I was one of these, you know, journalists interviewing him, because that's, it's kind of awkward. Like, you know, the reason, and it's just kind of awkward to bring up. Um, and my thing is too, is that with the, the Snyder cult, what if it does come out and it's terrible because it's not, Fitness and it wasn't able to. Like, that's my thing is like we, you know, when you want something so bad, sometimes you get it and it's like, oh, this is not what I expected. I, you know, put all these high hopes and expectations, and money because you know I've seen billboards and shirts and all kind of stuff being made for it, and then what if it just turns out to be this big bust? 
and maybe Snyder knows that, so that's why he kind of feels it a little bit. He's like, yo, this shit was trash, but, hey, I'll ride it as long as I can. But, <clears throat> you know, we've seen, you know, all the, you know, the <laughs> anger and and uh, debates and arguments on Twitter and other social media about it that <laughs> that's some, like, Rage, people might burn a city down or flip cars over, like because if it ends up being terrible, that they they put so much into something that wasn't what they thought it was going to be. So I think it's probably best that it never releases, you know, because of that. Um, and I, it's kind of I've never seen anything like it. I don't really don't understand how it's gone on this long and this big of a cult following to get something released that may have never even been close to being done, even if they said it was close. Um, but, yeah, that's got to be the most annoying. If I was if I was John, you know, if he, you know, with big actors, they seem lately to have uh, a lot of pull with playing certain roles, especially with Marvel, especially if they have, like, a fan backing. So, he may keep talking about it because he's like, I really want to play this role, or I really want to be a superhero, or he's maybe he's like, I want to get on that Marvel plan, whatever they're doing over there and getting everybody jacked. I'm trying to do that. Um, so, if I was an actor, I, I've seen Allison Breed, same thing. She kind of talked about it on a talk show, and she's you know kind of hinted that she would like to play the character, and it almost seemed like she talked to somebody. I don't, I don't know. Um, so it seems like when you with Marvel, if you have a uh, the, the fans, you get behind an actor, and it's kind of mentioned by the studio that you know that that can be the deciding factor. It seems like um, so. If I was John, I'd probably keep talking about it. At least I'd mention it, you know, on, on the side comment. But yeah, Ben's is definitely the the most annoying though. <clears throat> Yeah, and what's unfortunate is Zach does have a movie coming out, I believe, this year on Netflix, that zombie movie that he was filming last year. Um, mm. So we have to prepare ourselves because it's only going to get worse. Because if they're asking Ben about the ju- uh, about the you know the Snyder cult uh, or cut, sorry, uh, they're damn sure going to ask Zach Snyder about it when that press run comes around. So it's going to be <laughs> even worse. It's going to be oh, even man. worse um, when when that press when that press um, junket opens up for that, that movie that again, sounds like a really cool Zack Snyder movie, but the attention won't be on that. If it's good or bad, the attention won't be on that. It'll be about, did you hear what Zack uh, said about the, his movie? <laughs> He's waiting for Warner brothers to give him permission to release it and blah, blah. Like, so I'm like, I, I'm, I'm at this point where I'm kind of like, I kind of want to block everything that that, like anyone no i want to block anyone that i know is a huge fan of zach um because that's where i'm seeing like when i scroll through my 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 twitter um you know my my twitter page like i see people that follow other people that i don't follow but i'm seeing it because i follow them so i'm like i don't even want that so i might start blocking people that are snyder fans and i won't say any names but we have someone part of this geek vibes nation family that is probably the leader of the Snyder fans. Um, <laughs> that I'm going to have to mute a lot this year. Um, but, no, I, I think we all can agree um, it's time for Ben to officially uh, retire from being Batman in all aspects. Station Ben. Um, it's just time. Uh, but, all right, let's move on. Um, I want to talk about something that I've, feel to be super important and that is the importance of knowing the right news site um and the reason why that's important to me is because my family knows what what i do right they they know that we go over all the geek stuff movies tv uh you know comics animation stuff like that so i get a absurd amount of links sent to me an absurd amount of did you hear about this and I can honestly tell you guys, and this is this is accurate, at least 85% of what my family sends me is all fake. And I'm tired of, like, reading through it to go, 
No, but you do know, like, we have our own website where you could see that news if it were real from us. And they go, oh, no, but I saw this pop up on my page. I'm like, block it. And I don't want to call out any publication names. That, that, that's not what we're here to do. Um, if you're one of those publications that really gets off on putting out the possibly the stupidest of fake news, um, then by all means, if that's how you make your money, continue to do that. I just hope uh, that people are smart enough to understand and weed out what is real and what is not real. For example, someone telling you that Marvel is buying DC, you should off the strength know that that's impossible. Um, you should also know off the strength Warner Brothers slash AT&T would not be that stupid um, to sell all, all rights of DC. Uh, I could say half of what's keeping Warner Brothers floating is the money that they're making from DC. Not from live action necessarily. Everything else. Their comics are doing great. Their animation is doing great. Their cartoons are doing great. Um, that. And then Henry Cavill is, is um, Wolverine. Like, it's just certain rumors that you hear that you should just <laughs> immediately go, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? 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 And I, I don't think people realize, like, if Henry Cavill did get cast to play Wolverine, which we're not even shedding light on, but if he did, that means he will never be Superman again. And I don't think people realize that. Like, he can't be the Witcher, Wolverine, and Superman. When would he have time to film all this? Like, no, it's already a stretch for him to do Witcher and Superman, even though he said he'd make time for it. Um, so, I mean, it's just a lot of these sites are – poisonous to what we do, right? Because what people don't do is go back to these sites when it's proven that they're wrong um, and, like, stop paying attention to them. They don't do that. They stay listening to the same idiots that fuel the same stupidity day in and day out. Um, So I want to ask you both, who are both amazing writers who give actual news, not just hyperbole that happen to stick to, to the wall. Um, Tia, um, how annoying is it for you knowing that news is what we do, knowing that Kanan lives and breathes by giving us um, exclusives and uh, sometimes more than just rumors, actual news? How upsetting is it for you to see that a site is successful off of producing nothing series that they take and make into actual rumored news? Well, first of all, let me say that that whole thing of Marvel buying out DC, that was the most annoying rumor because I had everyone in my life messaging me that. My boyfriend, my mother, my friends, did you see this? Did you see that? And I was like, guys, just think about it for a second. That sounds like the fakest shit I've ever heard. And (laughs) it was blasting and it just, you know, first of all, I hate anything that tries to wedge, you know, a divide. And all that did was wedge a divide. People go, oh, F Marvel, this is why, da 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 I hated that. Um, and it's frustrating. And, Juwan, I know that you are a very good person, so you're not going to say it on air. I will say it on air. We Got This Covered has nothing covered because everything they put out <laughs> is the fakest shit ever. Oh, it, it, it gets under my skin. Skin. Because as you said, we try to say, we try and put the realist news, um, yada, yada. And, and if we're proven wrong, we go back and say, correction, we were wrong. And if something's a rumor, it is always put right in our title, rumor. Um, but then you have the, you know, a site like that and sites very similar who it just sounds like they're making shit up that they desperately want to be real. Like, I'll see constantly, and you know I'd love for this to be true, but they'll say, John Bernthal returning for the Punisher movie. Uh, Marvel is developing a Daredevil series for Disney+. Plus. Um, Brie Larson to be recast or something, you know, and they'll come out with, like, fake shit, and I'm like, what? You know, where are you guys coming with this? Or you just say, you know, that, hey, let's make a thing about it and it's going to get traction anyway, and then we'll just get people on our site. And it's so frustrating because it makes 
sites like ours not be taken seriously because, um, yeah, we're not Deadline and we're not Variety and we're not Collider, but we could be. Um, but because we like to cover geeky news, that unfortunately puts us in the same categories as these other sites that come out with the fake as shit. So we're just considered, say, you know, blogs. And Dom literally goes to like 50 movies a month to put out reviews <laughs> and everything. You know, I try my best to make sure that I always, first of all, source. Because that's another thing. None of these sites are going back to a source. We source every time at the bottom of every article of mine, source. And it goes to a, exactly to the page that I got that information from. And it's just ridiculous. It is frustrating because... I'm sitting here trying to make a living out of this and trying to be professional. I went to fucking school for a journalism degree. I don't know what any of these people went to school for, but clearly it was not this. So it is frustrating 100%, and I don't think that sites like that should be tolerated. And I don't think that they should be given the audience that they are, but people love rumors, and I think that it's just all clickbait, and we see how... Uh, much play clickbait gets because it's literally clickbait. And I don't know, I think, like, I have gotten to the point, I call out uh, pages like we got this covered. I used to just scroll and be like, that's stupid. But at this point, it's like almost detrimental just how fake it is and how annoying because we get frustrated when there are sites like this that are talking about, say, politics. And it's like you're still perpetuating fake news and you're still perpetuating propaganda almost and shit like that just shouldn't be tolerated. So yeah, it's, oh, it's so frustrating. Juwan, tonight you're just like picking at all of my like pet peeves, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> well, you're on fire tonight, Tia. You, you're shooting 100% from behind the line. So I'm loving it. I'm loving this energy. Um, but no, I mean, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. I, I don't do – I. this is before I, I, I met you both, um, I'd say maybe three, four years ago. I used to do news. Like, I used to have insides. I actually broke the news. Um, I'm not going to say I was the first one to, but to my knowledge, I was the first one that broke the um, – uh, who was the main villain for Justice League? I can't remember his name. Um, Warner Brother. Oh, man. No, well, yes, yeah, <laughs> that – that was that, that. I like that. Stephen Wolf. That's uh, Stephen Wolf. I like that. Those <laughs> Stephen Wolf. Yes. I broke the news on the actor that was going to be playing Stephen Wolf before it broke. Right. Everyone on Facebook. This is when Facebook was like super live. I had like 50 comments of people saying proof. Where's the proof? Uh, where's the link? Where, where's the article? Like, you know, where is it made official? And I'm like, so no one's going to believe me. You got 4,000 of you follow me. But none of you will believe me. From that day, I said I will never in my life drop a news report ever again. So it was very apropos when I met Kanan, and that's what he lived for. Um, so I was like, you are more than welcome to do it. I have no interest in doing it. Um, but to me, I'm kind of like me, Kanan, and Joel talk about rumors maybe hourly, every day. Yo, did you hear this? I heard this. I heard this. I heard this. Um, and it, it's one of those, it's cool to talk about rumors amongst yourselves, but by no means should you spread that false rumor that even you are saying, take it with a grain of salt when you're saying that just to friends, but then you release it as if it's news and you have people that want to believe something so bad, they will ignore, they will ignore all rationale to believe that. You know, like, I could easily just come out tomorrow and say, yo, heard this crazy rumor, super crazy rumor, Captain America is going to be in Falcon and Winter Soldier, Chris Evans just signed on the dotted line. I could say that, and by, by tomorrow morning, there will be people like Heroic Hollywood or Deadline that are like, uh, no, we, had, we spoke to executives, and they said, you know, that's false. The fact that they have to do that means it is poisonous what our industry has become. Uh, the fact that people are now living for any truth rather than the truth, um, you know, so it's just, it's, it's 
frustrating because it's like we worked really hard to give you guys great news. I actually had someone see it on, on Instagram um, the news that Kanan broke of the Flash um, filming in October. Um, I had numerous people in my Instagram comments telling me that, you know, that that's false. And I'm like, how would you know that's false? And I'm like, oh, I spoke to a representative at Warner Brothers. I'm like, oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, if you say so. If, if, if you say so. It, it, it's okay. You know, totally ignore the fact that me and Kanan speak to actual reps of these actual companies. Um, but sure, you, guy with 300 followers, you're the guy that has the end with Warner Brothers. I get it. No, I get it. You're right. I'm sorry. We were wrong. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's very frustrating. It's very annoying. And it, it's not borderline. It's 100% offensive to what we do. Um, Dom, how much, man, how much does this bother you? Because I don't really see you that active with trolls. And I'm like, Dom is like, Oof, that is a king right there. <laughs> <laughs> because... I, I feel like the three of us, we see it a lot, but we don't really engage that often with it. Um, and that is a superpower in today's age um, where you can see negativity and just kind of like mentally and physically avoid it. Um, so, Dom, how frustrating is it for you to see where these stupid reports and stuff are coming from and find the strength to just neo-like dodge from all of it um, and, and, you know, for you yourself to be able to say, that's obviously fake. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to hit you with a quote from, from Charlemagne the God, and it's a very unfortunate <laughs> quote. Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. And I hate Absolutely. that that's the, the, the time we live in, is that people rather believe something salacious because it sounds crazy than actually get the facts behind uh, even if it, you know, it's something that you could, someone could write like, the sky is going to turn purple tomorrow, and people are going to be like, oh shit, did you hear about the sky turning purple? It's like, what? The, what says what science <laughs> says it's going to turn purple? Nah, that's just what, what I heard. Are you read some bullshit headline from a website that doesn't really exist? Cool. Um, yeah, it's it's very frustrating, and it's funny that Tia <laughs> brought up we got this covered because I meant to send y'all a video the other day of. Um, Looper, you know, talking about we had information from we got this covered, uh, a website that puts out information that's not always the best information, and they mentioned it like four or five times, and it was kind of funny. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's it's very frustrating, and it's 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 insulting that you know once they put out information like that, and on numerous occasions, and people know that it, or find out that it's false later on down the road when other websites that are in the same bracket, like you said, put on information, they they look at it skeptically because they're like, well the other website this they had put out similar information, they they might be wrong too or and and it and it it takes away from, you know, a, a beautiful article that someone's written or the information that someone had to, you know, the, the hurdles they had to go through to get information from someone high up that people might not click on it. They might not take the time to want to read or follow up because they, because of another website puts off false information, then it puts the damper on everybody else's. So I don't, I don't understand. Like, if you want to do, if they want to be a gossip website, you know, rumors and gossip that is usually false, you can be, you know, someone like how the Shade Room started off or how uh, there was another website that was similar. You could do that. You could be a gossip website. Oh, we heard this, and it may or not be true, but you know that it's gossip, so you know that it may or may not be true. But if you're putting out stuff as facts that's clearly false, like, I don't understand how you could wake up every day and know that you do that. Like, this shows a lack of integrity to do that, especially, like, they got to have friends that look at them like, hey, like, why are you putting out all this false information? Like, you look real stupid out here. Oh, man, it's, they get clicks, though. It's like, all right, that's that's what you want to do. Like, yeah, it, uh, it makes you want to, it makes you want to, like, 
All right, square up. One is let's meet face to face. Yeah. I'm gonna put a stop this right now. <laughs> I don't. 100%. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. It um, because I I remember when we put out an article, and we put it out as a rumor, and um, and it clear like CSA clearly said a rumor, and then you know people start thinking that you know we just get paid to put out something that they thought might have been false. And Kanan's a trooper for him being like, nah, go read it. No, nah, look, you're, you don't understand. You know what I mean? He was, I was like, I don't know how you do it. Cause after like two or three comments, I'd have been like, all right, Drew, let's, let's square up. Cause I'm tired of arguing with you. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate that this is the world we live in that pe- the people that started like the onion, which they they put in their their whole thing that this is you know false news. This is a it's satire, and people decided that that model was good to go by. But hey, since they get so many clicks, we can just run it, and we don't got to say anything and just say that it's it's real. So yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't understand it. Um, and there's got to be and, and 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 a lot of like like us, a lot of other websites have a lot of integrity. So you don't want to just call out all these websites that you know are false for being false all the time because then it just looks like you're trying to bully them or something. But at some point, it's what you got to do sometimes. Like, hey, like, we can't – we got information from these guys and we can't believe it because they lie all the time, you know? Um, Yeah. So, yeah, I I don't know how to even fix the problem. No, nah, it's impossible to. I had someone tell me, like, oh, you guys aren't Collider. And I'm like, well, Collider got an, an actual scoop from us that they reported and gave us credit for on their show. And that person's response was, so? I'm like, but you just told me, like, we're not Collider, so you value <laughs> Collider. I'm telling you, we gave Collider a scoop, and you're saying so. Yeah, so? I'm like, all right, well, clearly this conversation is over. I don't think I have anything else to talk to you about. Um, again, I am not, you guys know, I am not the, I'm not the, you know, we told you so we're always right. That's not who I am. It's never been in my DNA. I don't even like credit. All I'm trying to say is people pay less attention to stuff we get right and more attention to stuff they get wrong. And I'm like, I don't get how that balances. I, I really don't get how any of that balances, but the world we live in, the world would rather be negative than to focus on anything positive. So it's just one of those things that we're just going to have to realize we have to work 30 times harder than they do to succeed um, because we are working from a, a point of positivity, and they are working from a point of, as Alfred eloquently said, a point of view where they just want to see the world burn. That's all these people want, and, and they're successful at it. Um, but all right. We've delved enough into that. Uh, me and Tia and Dom are already ready to square up with some of you guys out there. So <laughs> best if we move on. Um, so let's do that. Let's move on. We got some uh, filming that has wrapped, um, starting with Suicide Squad 2. That wrapped filming, I think, about a week or two ago. Um, Tia, what are your expectations for the Suicide Squad movie specifically? Because you love the first one so much. So what are your expectations for the second one? Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't want to say my expectations are high necessarily. All I can say is that I am insanely excited and that I have faith. Uh, obviously, you know that I really enjoyed the 2016 Suicide Squad. I'd like to think of it as really quick, because remember, what was it, a few months ago, we had our conversation on favorite DC films. And you were saying how much you enjoyed uh, Batman vs. Superman, even though you could acknowledge the problems with it. I feel the same mm-hmm. way about the first Suicide Squad. I really enjoy it, but I can acknowledge the problems with it. Um, so with the Suicide Squad or Suicide Squad 2, I think that there's more of an opportunity for it to obviously be better, simply because – and that sounds bad because – David Ayer is a great director, but James Gunn is also a fantastic director who has um, a really uh, visible style to his movies 
And I think that bringing him in and hearing his ideas really just get me excited. I am just curious. I love the teasers that are kind of coming out with it. I just love how he's full on putting and putting it out there. Do not get attached to anyone because not everyone's going to survive. And that's not something that we really saw in the first Suicide Squad because we all joke around that the only person who actually died was the person who climbed buildings. <laughs> um, but James Gunn is full on sitting there going, you know, people are going to die. And I think that's what you would expect from a Suicide Squad movie. So I'm insanely excited just because I've loved the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So I've loved James Gunn's style when it comes to it, and I always thought that the first Suicide Squad was pretty much DC's version of Guardians of the Galaxy, so you just got the guy who does the Guardians movie to do your next Suicide Squad, and I'm really curious to see who everyone is playing, um, see how it carries over. I know you're going to kill me, but I still haven't seen Birds of Prey, and I'm just curious to see how all three movies kind of exist within the same world, even though every director would like to tell you that they exist in a completely separate world. But anyway, I'm really excited. I don't want to say that my expectations are high because I'm not going in saying, oh, you know, it better be good or I'm going to throw hands. But I'm going in going, I really do think that it's going to be good. See, so yeah, I can't begin to express how disappointed I am. You've still not seen Birds of Prey. Um, every time, no, no, no. <laughs> it, it's that every every time I plan to go see it, the person that I plan to go see it with drops out, and it's at that point where I'm like, oh, I, I should just go see it by myself. But you know, the coronavirus is in New York right now, and so I'm kind of like, maybe I should just wait for it to come out on, um, you know streaming. So that's where I'm at with this. Oh boy. We're we're gonna talk about the coronavirus, but <laughs> Tia, uh, you you need to go see that movie. If I need to come to New York to see it with you and like put us in bubbles so we don't get affected by the coronavirus, I will do that, Tia. That movie is good and deserves your money. Um so we're gonna fix that. We're we're definitely gonna fix that. Um but, um, yeah, Dom, uh, your expectations for James Gunn's The Suicide Squad? So, <clears throat> with a huge ensemble cast like they have it, the movie can either be fantastic or it can be terrible because they're trying to give too much camera time to all the different actors because they have uh, – a certain amount of fame that comes with their name. Um, But I do, since it's James Gunn, and the actors that he has, they're all very, they're all, they don't, they're not, they're not screen hungry actors. They play well with others. Um, The only one I'm kind of confused about is Pete Davidson. I don't know what he's doing there, but I mean, if they put him there, He's there for a reason, um, but no, I think I think it's gonna be good. I I, I think that um, the first Suicide Squad movie is a fun movie to watch. Um, like every time it comes on TNT or TBS, I'm like, oh, I watch this. It's, it's fun to watch. Um, and this one, you know, it's. With, I feel like, too, with, with Taika being um, attached to it, I would have to say that he has his hands in on, you know, a lot of production and uh, directing as well. I'm sure there's some kind of bouncing ideas off each other uh, between him and, and Gunn. I feel like it would be a shame if there wasn't any kind of little bit of collaboration, even if – because Taika is not a person who would even – want his name to be attached to producing or directing if he wasn't, like, the main one doing it because he seems like a very, you know, hey, that's your thing. I'll help you out if you want to. That's cool. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm I'm pretty excited for it. I feel like it's going to be a, a fun movie. I just want 
some of these uh, actors that are part of it, it's going to be interesting to see how they all kind of uh, mess with each other because, like, Peter Capaldi, I love him as a doctor. He kind of fits weird with this cast, but it's 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 got to be it's going to be good. I'm, I'm excited for it. My expectations are just don't do what the first one did, and that's create <laughs> two different plot lines. Um, yeah. So, I mean, as, as long as you're consistent and rational, um, I, I'm fine. I mean, I, I don't really have high expectations for it. Um, my main thing is when it comes to Suicide Squad, they usually take characters from our heroes' um, stories, so it's like if you do a Suicide Squad 3 and you want to take, I don't know, Mirror Master or something, is Mirror Master, the same Mirror Master in Ezra Miller's world? Like, it's just certain questions like that that um that I have. So, I mean, we'll figure out what this world is um, when the Batman comes out and when Suicide Squad, uh, the Suicide Squad comes out. We'll know if there is a overarching connection between those worlds, and that, to me, is where my expectations are. I want to see... Um, will Har- will Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn interact with Robert Pattinson's Batman? Um, will you know Idris Elba's the vigilante? If that's really who he's playing, will that interact with another hero somewhere out there? Those are usually my biggest questions. Um, you know, and the biggest question I have, I, I would say, is uh, James Gunn said Harley Quinn plays a big role in this movie, and last time we saw Harley Quinn was Birds of Prey. So is this Harley Quinn after Birds of Prey? Um, because we know in mm-hmm. Birds of Prey, sorry, Tia, bit of a spoiler, I guess. Um, it tells us that movie isn't that long after the first Suicide Squad. Um, right. So it's like, so does this take place after Birds of Prey? Because we know that she was in prison before Birds of Prey. So it's like, wh- where where is it? Um, so that'll be fun to figure out. But as Joel always tells me, don't give myself a headache about things that I don't really need to worry about yet. Um, but yeah, Suicide Squad comes out next year. I believe next year. Um, next year, right? Right, Tia? Yeah, I think it's August of 2021. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I I, that, I was trying no, to get to my phone to like unmute it, and I was like, damn it. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, Dom, Dom got you with the put back. Um, but no, uh, yeah, I think that's in August. And I think the Batman is in June. Um, so yeah, that, that makes sense. But, um, all right, let's move on to something else that is wrapped up filming. And that is WandaVision, the show that I am almost a thousand percent sure will not get a season two. Um, Dom, I actually start with you. What are your expectations for WandaVision knowing that it's not just a show, but that it, it interlaps, um, or what word am I trying to think of? It, it, it connects itself to Doctor Strange too, so it's not just like oh, it's a show that exists in the MCU. Like no, this show directly connects into Doctor Strange too. So what are your uh, expectations knowing that? Um, I feel like from what the the little bit that we've seen, uh, little clips and images. Uh, it's very. It's a. It looks like it's going to be a very interesting show. Like, I, uh, I guess I could say weird. Um, I feel like this is going to be kind of. Um, I mean, I don't know what to expect from Doctor Strange now, but I feel like this is supposed to be what sets up uh, Wanda for being like one of the most powerful uh, of the Avengers because uh, we know that. There's a power that she hasn't tapped into yet that we've seen glimpse, glimpses of. Uh, I think that's the, what this is supposed to kind of do, um, especially if she's created her own, you know, world where she's like a 1950s, you know, lifestyle and she's got her kids and, you know, so I feel like it's supposed to set up, which it may also set up, you know, some kind of eventual um Mutant tie-in, maybe, um, but I, yeah, that's why I feel. I think I feel like that's where the, the it's going to lead to uh, somehow, possibly, probably bringing back, you know, vision for a foreseeable future, maybe, um, and maybe that's the strength of her powers that she is able not just create this in her head or create it for just her, but 
to completely bring him back maybe. Um, but, yeah, with the, now with Doctor Strange being kind of up in the air, I don't know how exactly if – I mean, they're going to have to kind of keep – the movie the same as it was going to be originally, so it does tie into it. Um, but, yeah, I think that's what it's going to do. It's going to set her up as being like an Omega level or somewhat similar to an Omega level powered, uh, you know, I guess they don't call her a mutant, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting. It's going to be an interesting show. I, my mindset immediately goes to, you remember House of M, right? Right, Dom? You remember how it ends with, well, not ends, but the biggest arc of it is when she says no more mutants and they all disappear. What yeah. if, right? What if this show ends like the very last scene of the very last episode? She utters the word mutants and we see a portal mm. open and then it just fades mm. to black. And then we have to wait until Doctor Strange uh, multiverse of madness to see what the heck she just like what did she do like what did she do to where we now have mutants here like where did they come from so strange obviously fixing all the craziness that Wanda has just ensued uh, merely by uttering words I'm like that would actually be really freaking dope <laughs> yeah. because I don't yeah. think because think of, think of it I don't think two things I don't think Elizabeth Olsen will still be Wanda 10 years from now. And that's how long I think it should be before we even remotely think about a house event. Right. So I'm like, all right. So right. clearly it looks like they'll be taking aspects of house of M and probably implementing them, whether it be in this show or in Dr. Strange too. Um, pr- possibly, possibly. I don't want to say that like it's factual, um, but I'm like, how dope would that be? Like she's, she's looking at vision kind of like disappear. She's realizing that was all in her head. Um, but she remembers there was a conversation she had had at some point of this whole thing. So where someone was saying something about people that are just like her, but they called them mutants. And then she just utters mutants. And then you just see like this portal behind her open and then it fades to black. I'm like, I'm getting chills thinking about that. And like how <laughs> visually crazy that would be. And in the end of Doctor Strange, the end credit scene is us seeing, obviously, he fixed everything, but the people that stepped out of the portal are now what we deem to be mutants. Um, or she says it, and there's like this alternate reality that becomes our reality that mutants have always been here. Um, kind of like how what, excuse me, um, how Crisis on Infinite Earth combined worlds you could say there was a, a reality where mutants had, al- had always existed, where Charles still has his background, Magneto still has his background, and then they blend the two worlds um, to where it becomes mutants have always been here, and people remember it. They remember that mutants have always existed. We now, have, as viewers, have to catch up to the idea of there's mutants now. Um, I, I know this is way less field, but I'm kind of like, I wouldn't mind that. Like, that'd be really dope. It would explain a lot. It would reduce you having to give us another origin story of Charles and Xavier. I'm like, at this point, seeing them go through the Holocaust, seeing Uncle Ben die, seeing Bruce's parents die, it's too (laughs) traumatic. I don't want to keep seeing it. Like, it's sad. So I'm like, I would rather it to where it's like, no, you guys already know the story of us. This is going to be a story about – 15-year-old uh, Cyclops and Storm and, and you know, uh, Jean and, and stuff like that. So I'm like, she get right into what we want, and that's our X-Men. Um, Tia, I, I know you're probably not the biggest fan of, of my, my idea of merging two separate universes, um, but what are your expectations for, for WandaVision? I... Really, I'm excited for Wanda Vision. I think we've spoken about it before, where Wanda Vision was probably originally at the bottom of my list when it comes to Disney Plus shows that I'm looking forward to. And throughout everything that we've seen, it has crawled all the way up, pretty much to the top. The implications that this show is going to have to the rest of the MCU is quite obvious. Not obvious as to what those implications are going to be, but that there are going to be implications. 
that is so cool. Wanda, how they're treating her now is just marvelous. I have to say that um, I feel like she was a bit of just there in the first few movies that we saw. But Marvel has really given her a platform to show the viewers, no, she's like one of the more powerful freaking uh, beings in this universe. And now she's getting her own show. And we're going to actually show you how powerful she is because of what she can do what she can manipulate, and what she's going to bring to the MCU moving forward. I don't mind, actually, your whole idea about the merging. Um, I'm with you where I don't need any more origin stories. I mean, I guess for those who maybe don't know anything about these people and never have seen previous iterations of them may need a bit of a refresher course, but you can go read that or something like that. I, or, or go watch yeah. the movies, yeah. Or go watch the movies. I don't need another first class. I don't want to see... We already have Spider-Man Young, and that works, but I don't need to see any other young uh, superheroes. I don't need a young Cyclops or a young Jean Grey. I want fully... He, Formed adults. <laughs> See, I don't. I actually don't think that's where they're going, Tia. I actually think we saw the X Men in the '90s or late '90s, early 2000s as full adults. We then saw First Class. They weren't children. <laughs> they looked like they were probably around the age of 18, 19, 20. Um, I do believe that Feige, if he does the X Men, will do them younger, 15, 16, around there to where whoever you have, you're giving them the opportunity uh, that if you want to do a few years later, they're now 20. If you want to do a few years after that, they're 20. I think they're going to go the route the same way they went the route of um, Tom Holland. Like, think of it like this, Tia. Why did they go the route of Tom Holland being young? Because that is the one demographic they did not, they did not cater to. Andrew Garfield was what? Same as Toby, high school right in the college. Um, they had never done prime high school years um, leading into to college, like freshmen, soft, like they, they haven't really done that. So that's why they made Peter Younger here. I could 100% see Feige taking these X-Men and not making them, obviously, not making them um, like 10, 11, 12 years old, but like teenage, you know, like mid-teens, 15, 16, 17, around there. Um, and honestly, I like it. Like, I love Ty. I loved, um, what's her name from Game of Thrones. I'm like, that's not a bad age bracket, making them that young to do the X-Men. Because I kind of would prefer it. So we don't have to worry about someone like <laughs> Hugh Jackman <laughs> 10 years from now going, yo, I'm really tired of lifting weights to do this role. You go younger, and it's like you can do them at 16. You can do them at 21. You can do them at 25. Like you can space it out a lot more. So I'm like, I kind of kind of don't mind it. You obviously make Charles and Magneto older. Um, you could make the surrounding characters older, Mystique, Juggernaut. Um, but I'm like, I would like to see a younger Storm, younger Cyclops. I get what you're saying. It kind of feels like we just saw it. But I'm saying I kind of want a little younger than that. <laughs> so I'm like, I haven't really seen younger than that. I consider them kind of like 18, 19, 20, around there. Um, so I'm like 15, 15, 16. I'd like it from there on. Um, I think it'd be unique, and it'd be something that we haven't really necessarily seen from the X-Men, um, where you could actually let these actors and characters grow through the years, and you could do a long-standing storyline rather than getting someone in their mid-20s, and now it's like, all right, is this person going to be good doing X-Men for the next 10, 15 years? Because I think the X-Men are going to be used the way that we saw the Avengers used. Like, remember how many movies Robert Downey Jr. did at 40-something heading into 50? How many Evans did in 30, I think, going into 40? So I'm kind of like, you have to know that whoever you get, they're there for the long haul. And I'm like, the younger, the better. It's easier. It's easier and probably cheaper <laughs> if you do it that way. 
all I'm thinking about is, um, oh, God, I forget if it was the first or the second Deadpool when Deadpool says, we've got to get him young, you know, uh, so that we have a 10-year um, contract in place or something when he was putting together the X Force. It's like, <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about. It's like, oh, got to get him in young because, you know, they, they got to be in it for the long haul. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Deadpool. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I, I kind of just think with WandaVision, you're opening yourself up to something that's fun. It's free. You can really do what you want because it probably won't last more than just this season. Um, and like I said, I think it would be super dope if the season ended with um, her uh, whispering mutants. And that's what sparked all this craziness that uh, embarks in Doctor Strange, too. Um, but, yeah, I think we're all really excited to see what the show gives us come December. Hopefully it stays in that spot and does not move or maybe comes a little closer to, like, November. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited for this show. But, all right, let's move on. We got a confirmation from Tessa Thompson. I believe it was on Entertainment Tonight. I think that was where she did her interview or uh, not interview, but her um, little thing on the red carpet. Um, apparently, Bale is officially confirmed as a villain for Thor 4. Now, I do want to say this. Everyone that kept saying we already knew this, we didn't. We knew Bale was up. I mean, we knew Bale joined Thor 4. It was not 100% confirmed that he was going to be a villain. Main reason why I can tell you that you guys are full of crap when you say it was always known he was going to be a villain is because half you idiots kept trying to tell us that he was going to be Beta Ray Bill. And I'd spend every day telling you how that logically made no sense. You bring Christian Bale on to be the best buddy of Chris Hemsworth? Why? Why would that be smart? Christian Bale is going to be Beta Ray Bill uh, for the next however many times we see Thor. No, it made more sense that he would be a villain, um, you know, because it's just you don't bring Christian Bale in to be another one of the good guys. Um, it would probably be a different uh, take for him, um, but no, it's just it's it's not what you do. But we officially now know that he is going to be the villain of Thor Four. So I ask you a two sided question to you: um, Does this do anything for you hearing the confirmation that he's going to be a villain? Because I think. Three of us already figured that when we heard he came on to the project. But was there anything else that you took from Tessa Thompson's little soliloquy from that interview that she did on the red carpet um, about Thor 4? To be honest, not really on both fronts. It's funny because, as you said, I think the three of us already assumed that he was going to be a villain. So when I was scrolling through Twitter and it was saying Tessa Thompson confirms Christian Bale will be a villain, I was like, yeah, no, duh. And then I kept scrolling. Um, To me, it's just still so surreal to hear Christian Bale's name associated with Thor 4, uh, Thor Love and Thunder. I mean, I love it because Christian Bale, I love Christian Bale, and I'm insanely excited about Thor Love and Thunder, but it's just like, oh, wow. He, this is actually happening. Like, Christian Bale, Christian Bale is really associated with this movie. But it is really cool. I'm, a, I'm excited to see who he plays. I have no expectations as to who he's playing. Um, she did, I believe, also confirm that it's going to be a CGI character. Um, so, I mean, let's see what happens with this, what Taika even has in store. But I think we spoke about this um, when we even first were talking about the news of him joining or even thinking about joining is the script and the role offered to Christian Bale must have been really good because we all know Christian Bale doesn't need to do anything for money. So this wasn't one of those things where he was just like, oh, shit, I really need to pay rent. Let me go do. Um, He can pick whatever the hell he wants. So, he must have really liked what was pitched to him, and I'm pumped to see who he's playing. But so I really have no other comments other than that. Yeah, I mean, e- either that or, you know, he's just really um, – maybe he's really good friends with either Chris or Taika. Um, it was more so of, you know, wanting to work with Chris and Taika. 
Um, but I don't doubt that that script is great. Um, I mean, it had to be great. It made Natalie Portman want to come back. Uh, um, and she really hated those movies, it seemed like. So to get her to go, oh, yeah, no, I'm back. Like, yeah, let's do it. Um, I, I, I really, I really truly believe the script is going to be one of the, uh, one of the best the MCU has. Um, Dom, did this news really do anything for you? And did you take anything else away from, uh, what Tessa Thompson was saying? Uh, I think the biggest takeaway for me is that, um, that Marvel is not playing (laughs) with this new, uh, stage of movies they're doing. I mean, uh, we all know <clears throat> the characters and the actors that they've had now, but to, to add another prolific actor that, you know, people have in their list of, like, top ten actors, you know, that's it's serious that, you know, going forward is they're not they're not playing around. They don't plan on taking the fell for the gas anytime soon, uh, and that just means that we're going to have more of the cream of the crop coming to Marvel to play, you know, heroes and villains that we've all loved, you know, reading and and watching on uh on screen. Yeah, no, I'm completely with you, man. Anything Marvel that's coming up, we're, we're all game for. I mean, it doesn't really take much to hype us about it. Um DC is where we're waiting to get that hype train rolling. But um with Marvel, Kevin, we trust you, man. Um, but all right, let's move on. I want to mention this because Cannon will kill me if I do not. Um, the Flash movie is scheduled to film in September. That is exclusive news from Geek Vibes Nation. Um, I know a lot of people are reposting it from other people and not giving us credit. It was an exclusive from us. Um, so that means that if San Diego Comic-Con stands, that there is a really good chance that we will be seeing Ezra and um, God, I, I was holding on to this all show to remember his name and I can't remember his name now. Oh, Andy Muschietti. We'll probably see Andy Muschietti and Ezra Miller. The best possible thing this movie could do if it is looking to start filming in September, excuse me, um, is bring out the cast. Bring out the cast. Uh, that's what we should be hearing that um, what's her name that played Iris in Justice League well (laughs) who (laughs) filmed the scene as Iris in Justice League did not make the final cut but um, clear was Clint so it's in the Snyder (laughs) cut (laughs) no 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 well technically yes technically yes Uh, it was either originally filmed for Justice League or BVS but it was um, Barry saving Iris from like the truck that was about to crash into like this uh restaurant or something like that clear clemens or something clemens is, is her name um Kiersey clemens i think is her name but yeah, yeah she's playing iris um so you know i, I want to fish aware that she's coming back um i want to know who the villains are going to be obviously if you're doing a uh what do you call it um Flashpoint storyline, reverse flash has to be there. Tia, you'll like this. Um, our buddy Jonas, who gave us a lot of credit on Instagram for this report. Um, uh, Jonas, he, um, you met him at a, at a New York Comic Con. Um, yeah. He actually fan casted Tony um, from, uh, God, what's the show that we like from Amazon? The Boys. Um, he casted Tony as reverse flash. And I'm like, I wouldn't hate that. I wouldn't hate that at all. Um, I still love the idea of the guy from You being Reverse Flash or the guy from Dexter being Reverse Flash or the guy I've been wanting for like 30 years now, Matthew McConaughey. Um, but Tony, Tony Starr is not a bad pick at all. Um, no. Yeah, not a bad pick at all. Like I'm, The more I see it, like Jonas put up like the, the artwork, I'm like, I really kind of like it. Like, I really, really, really like it. Um, But I wanted the guy from you because I'm really attracted to the idea of the reverse flash not being that much older than Barry. Um, And it kind of being these events of the reverse flash happened to him um, when he was Barry, you know, around Barry's age. So we're not getting a a reverse flash that's 20 years older than Barry or 30 years older than Barry. He's maybe what five, 
years older uh, around there. And I'm like, the guy from you is very sadistic. Um, and I'm like, you can easily pull that off. Um, but I think he'd also and be a what, great Moon Knight. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And what would be great is if Penn Bagley was Reverse Flash, it would just be another role for Penn to just skate on. But I don't know if you've seen oh, yeah. that. He, he's so great at, like, playing these characters and then obviously he's playing these, like, sadistic people, but he's so good-looking that fans, like, kind of, you know, are apologists for his characters, and he goes online and just says, like, no, you should not think that Joe from you is attractive. This is literally the worst behavior ever. So it would just be, like, the trend of him just, like, having to tell people how shitty the characters are that he plays. Yeah, well, unfortunately for him, when you're that beautiful, you don't get to dictate how I view you. Um, the minute you become <laughs> ugly, that's when I'm able to tell you, like, your character sucks. But when you're beautiful, you just get away with anything. Um, so enjoy it. That's a compliment, not not a knock. It's a compliment. <laughs> um, but, Tia, your thoughts on The Flash starting filming in September? Uh, that kind of fast-tracks a lot of stuff. Um, and it's, you know... Assumably, we, we'd hope that we'd get um, some casting news soon. Yeah, I feel like lately I am eating my words, which is perfectly fine. But I do remember, what, about a half year ago or a year ago when we would talk about The Flash or we would talk about Black Adam, and I would just say to you, I'm tired of hearing about these movies. They're never going to happen. And they're happening now. So I eat my words, it's perfectly fine. Um, I mean, listen, John, you know, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Ezra Miller as Barry Allen. But if he's given a cool villain, then I can I can deal with it. So if you're telling me that, like, you know, what if they got, and obviously this is just, you know, us fan casting, but if someone like Anthony Starr or Penn Bagley came in as the villain, I instantly would be like, I don't even care who's the Flash at this point because Reverse Flash is way more interesting. So it's cool to see like that it is starting production, um, and I'm hoping that we can get some casting news soon because with these superhero movies, the villain just means so much, and you've got to have a good villain especially for, you know, I feel like this movie, they need to really, I don't want to say they need to, but like me, I need to get some really awesome casting for me to be interested in it, if if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. And I will say, because a lot of people aren't fans of Ezra Miller's Flash, I will say, I always say it's really hard to blame the actor um, mainly because you kind of assume Zach probably wanted him, to, wanted him to be more of an eccentric Barry Allen, a kind of out there Barry Allen, um, you know, more so um, dude Barry than the comic Barry that we know. Um, but, I mean, think of it like this. It's a very good chance Andy Muschietti could go into the lab with Ezra um, and kind of just say, let's scrap that. Let, let's let scrap that. Let, let's go for a more, you know, realistic tone of, of, of Barry um, than kind of what you set up here. Um, mainly because, and Tia, this is where I laugh. Remember how in Justice League he goes, um, all I've ever done was kind of just like push people and run away. Remember how he said that? I'm kind of yeah. like, but, but you took down Boomerang. How'd you take him down, Flash, if all you did was push him and run away? Like, I don't think... Because there's no I don't continuity. The, right. I don't think the continuity of the, of the characters were the same between Suicide Squad and Justice League. Um, so I'm kind of like, it wouldn't upset me if Andy Muschietti came in and was like, I want your Barry to be different than, than whatever the hell that shit was. Like, don't, don't, don't do that anymore. Uh, and the biggest thing to me is, you got to fix how he runs. I'm sorry, Andy, if you put this movie out and it is Oscar-worthy, I will still spit on it if he runs like he's fucking figure skating. It's, it's horrendous oh, to so look bad. at. It's, just, it's not Wait. how a human being runs. Was that, what it was suppo- 
I'm sorry, was that what it was supposed to be? Because I didn't even, like, catch that. If that's, like, what they were trying to go with, like, oh, he's running as if he's a figure skater. I was just like, it's as if he was Forrest Gump, and it's the first time he's ever used his <laughs> legs without no. braces. I mean, it made I think but... <laughs> I think they were trying to say it was, like, a realistic version of how you would run with that much access power or something. It's in one of these Ezra Miller interviews that, like, I'm sure at some point I'll find and send your way. But, um, no, it was never said that he was trying to run like a figure skater. I'm just saying I've watched figure skating, and he runs how, like, they figure skate. But they don't figure skate like they're trying to run. That's what frustrates me. I'm like, why, Zach? Like, you do know you could literally just run regular, and it would look fine. Like, what is this side-to-side business? Like, what, is, what the hell is he doing? Um, to be fair... You could say, uh, I don't know that they have, but you could say he wasn't the most athletic kind of guy, so running is something he rarely did. So now it's like you're running with all this excess power. How do you do it? It still sounds stupid. Change it, Andy. (laughs) Change that running form. It's It's disgusting. And it's it's like the fans will thank you because that was like – in Justice League, when we saw um, Aquaman and everyone in the sea talking, and they can only talk once they and were in those little bubbles, and instantly James Wan was like, "Fuck that! They're in the water, and they're they can breathe down there. They can talk down there as well." And I was like, "Oh, thank you, James Wan, because that was really stupid that whole bubble thing." And so it's like Andy Muschietti, we will thank you if you just change up that stupid run of his because it was so distracting. It's so distracting. Yeah, I, I will say James Gunn definitely went the the route of um, <laughs> SpongeBob, to where that didn't even really make sense. To where they were just like, no, no, we could freely talk. Like, no, no, it, 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 it's it's cool James? down here. James James Wan, sorry, James Wan, James yeah. Wan. Um, I'm like, hey, no, even SpongeBob didn't do a really good job of explaining that. But um, but no, it, it's still visually better than watching bubbles go up and down. Um, but, um, what are your thoughts of um, Flash looking to start filming in um, in September? Seemingly exactly what I asked Tia. I mean, that has to mean we get casting soon, right? And we get what the hell this script is supposed to be about. Yeah, I think it's definitely one of those it's about time movies. Um, because I know I have a lot of uh, friends that are huge Flash fans, and they're like, why don't we get anything? And I'm like, nah, I feel you. Just my characters get movies. I don't know. Maybe your character just not get money. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, no, nah, it's definitely like um, what you said. Like, I think that they're going to have to kind of maybe that if it, you know, holds the uh, continuity that after Justice League, his – Attitude will have to change somewhat because of of how, what the things that he saw, the things that happened, and he won't be as like I don't even know how to describe what his personality was. It was very I don't know. It wasn't even like because it's weird because he was like a loner, but he didn't act like a loner. It was it yeah. was like I don't know. It was weird. It didn't really fit uh, how it should have. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a long time coming, uh, especially as as uh, as big as of a character he is, you would have, you would have thought that they would have done this a long time ago. Um, as was kind of a, a weird guy to me. I don't know. It, in Justice League, it was, he wasn't my favorite person, um, but it could be just because of the personality that they gave him. Uh, so yeah, I, I do think that will have to kind of be tweaked a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, I would assume that they they should have a lot of information coming out soon uh, because people are going to uh, – DC has an opportunity to, like, steal some some spotlight from, from Marvel, and this is a perfect opportunity for them to, to do that. So they can't, they can't mess this up. No, I mean, it, it's right there for the taking. I mean, if they still do San Diego Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con will not only get a trailer for the Batman, they'll have had a trailer for the Suicide Squad, 
even if they're short little teaser trailers, um, they'll have that. Wonder Woman will have already been released by that point, I believe. Um, you should get Flash, where everyone comes up on stage. We have an idea on what to expect for it. Um, I mean, there's just a lot. Like, they should – I'll say this, uh, that we got a Flash starting to film in September. So if you're looking to film, that means you have a suit made in, or a suit should be made, if not now, soon, and Ezra should be fitting for it, meaning San Diego Comic-Con could get their first official look at what Ezra looks like in whatever suit Andy Muschietti and them came up with. Um, so I'm like, you're, you're, I'll never say that DC could outdo Marvel because I can tell you this right now. Kevin Feige walks on that stage and goes, hey, here's the X-Men. I, DC <laughs> could tell me whatever they want. It will mean nothing. <laughs> I mean, I, I just looked at them bringing Mahershala Ali out on stage as Blade, and I said, oh, yeah, they won the year. The year, <laughs> Dom. <laughs> not, not the stage. They won the year. Um, so I just I look at it differently, but I, I'm I'm with you. This is a chance for them to kind of come out and just blow the doors off. Um, even if San Diego Comic Con gets canceled, I think they should go live at like um, somewhere where you can get everyone to kind of come fly in, um, and you do something a little bit more personal, and you release it there on live. Like, hey, uh, hour one. This is the Batman panel. Hour two, this is the Flash panel. Hour three, Aquaman. Hour four, um, the Suicide Squad. Like, do it like that, and I'm telling you, it will. the Internet won't be able to contain themselves um, because you've just done such a great job, um, you know, just blowing our minds with whatever you show us. Um, so, I mean, yes, this is a great opportunity, not only for DC, but for Warner Brothers. Because remember, Warner Brothers still has King Kong versus Godzilla sitting in the tub that we've heard nothing about. Um, so I'm like, they got a lot just sitting there ready to throw at it. So I'm like, this is a huge year for uh, for them, but don't get it twisted, Dom. The words, fantastic. For, like, dead serious, Feige could hear, like, Warner Brothers is playing in this huge DC panel, and Feige goes, you know what? All I'm going to do, walk on stage, show you the Eternals trailer, even though I can almost guarantee you guys that that trailer will be out before Black Widow comes out, if that's not pushed back. Feige has to do, Dom, is walk on stage and go, I brought some people with me. You guys might know them. You might know these characters. Meet the Fantastic Four. The internet's dead. <laughs> the internet will die. It will explode <laughs> spontaneously, especially if the last person he brings out is John Krasinski. John Krasinski. As, <laughs> as, as, yeah. The internet will blow up. There will be nothing we need to talk about. Nothing DC can do. John. Everyone will die. <laughs> um, the best thing, the best thing ever, um, was when they did the panel and announced Mahershala Ali as Blade. Your reaction with Joel is still one of my favorite things. Just watching the exact moment. I forget if it was you or him that like literally flew out of your seat. <laughs> I started crying. I was like, I gotta call my dad. Like, I got We gotta end this video now. I have to go call my dad and tell him this is the greatest day of my life. Mahershala Ali is Blade. That's insane. Tia, I remember my my brain exploded. Uh, had this been like four years ago, maybe three or four years ago, when Feige ended the night by bringing Brie Larson out and telling me I was getting Captain Marvel. I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, what? We're getting Captain Marvel. So I'm like, Feige finds a way at the end of every San Diego Comic-Con to make me just go, I don't even know what, my brain is dead right now, Feige. So I'm like, bringing John out with the rest of the Fantastic Four, shut the internet down. We won't be able to breathe, live, nothing. Um, If the coronavirus doesn't kill us, I assure you, bringing out the Fantastic Four on stage will do it. Um, (laughs) But yeah, we're all excited. Um, we're looking forward to the flash starting shoot, uh, shooting in a few months. We just need information. That's all we're waiting for. We just need information. And for any of you out there that did not believe our our um, our gracious scoop from our scoop master, um, I would just like to reevaluate you guys come September when they start shooting and have all of you apologize. Not to me. 
but to our scoop master. Um, but all right, let's uh, we got less than twenty something minutes left. So let's get through these last few topics. Um, I want to spend a little time on this. Uh, the coronavirus we've seen in the past few months has been taking the world by storm. I personally believe um, the coronavirus isn't as deadly as people make it seem. I do believe it is uh, it is attracting attracting itself to people with respiratory issues um, that would likely get overtly sick from a flu or anything like that. Um, but it still is scaring the shit out of the rest of the world. We've had James Bond get pushed back. We've had uh, a convention be canceled. Um, we're now looking at the possibility of NBA games being played to no fans. The world is really crumbling by this report of coronavirus. Um, so, Tia, I will go to you first. Um, what are your thoughts? How bad do you think this is going to affect movies, shows, sports, um, um, concerts, stuff like that? How bad do you think this will get before it gets good? Well, I mean, as I said, I believe at the beginning of this show, um, the governor of New York just declared a state of emergency. And I live in New York, for any of those who are wondering. Um, and it is quite scary because by, I can just say for us, uh, Monday, there were two cases in New York. And then by Tuesday, there were 30 cases, uh, all pretty much connected to, like, one one dude because it's on our local news channel, like, 24-7, and now it's up to, I believe, 76 people. So it's the rapidness of and how contagious it is. And I understand that some health officials are saying that, you know, more people this year already have died from the flu than they have coronavirus. And what you don't really hear on the news is that over 53,000 people have recovered from the virus. But it is still mm-hmm. it is still frightening because it is so contagious, and not only is it contagious, it shows the same sort of signs as the common cold. So whereas you would just get a simple cough or a fever, and you say, oh, "I'll just wait out and stay home," now you have to wonder, is it something else? And you know they're like costing three thousand dollars to test it right now. So it's very frightening in America because it about a month ago was just something that seems like it was contained to strictly China. Um, But this is going to affect a lot because China actually closed all 70,000 of their movie theaters, which is why I think James Bond decided to postpone because they don't want to lose out on all the money that they would have normally gotten by showing in China. And I think that if this isn't contained quickly, Black Widow is going to have no other choice but to postpone because they too are going to want the money that they would get from China. Um, You know, who knows when China is going to reopen their movie theaters. Anything that has a big crowd seems to be shutting down. Um, SXSW canceled, and that's massive because that's a convention that we, you know, would have gotten news out of. They would have showcased things. Freelancers were depending on that for income, and that just shut down. Now, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that New York Comic Con isn't affected because it's still, you know, that's in October, so that's still a good amount of months, you know. But San Diego Comic Con could definitely be affected. Um and we are looking at things happening where, you know, maybe they film stuff and there's uh, no audiences. I mean, and traveling as well. Um, they had to, I believe, delay shooting in Italy for the next Mission Impossible. It's, it's going to affect a lot. And it is a lot of the news as well, um, you know, just panicking us because, it, as I said, our local news was on it 24-7 this whole week. I had the news on at work, and every time you looked at it, it was coronavirus-related. So it is certainly um, causing a panic. Um, but 
at the same time, it is something that's very real because it's something that is so easily caught. And it is for people who are elderly, who have immune, you know, immune system problems. But that's frightening. I'm very close with my grandparents, right? So let's just say me living in New York, I catch it. I may have a chance to survive that, but I just saw my grandparents recently. They're probably going to contract and they probably aren't going to have a chance to survive that either. So that's, it's just very frightening and it's, uh, we don't know what's happening. And the fact that the CDC said that they wouldn't be able to come out with a vaccine until 2021, man, we're, we're still like three months into 2020. What the hell is going to happen to our world by 2021 if you don't have a, a vaccine until then? So a lot's going to be affected. This is going to be really weird. And our economy is just to get real and serious for a moment. Our economy is tanking. Uh, the Dow was the Dow was as low this week as it was back in 2008 when we had a recession. That's so real, and that's going to affect a lot of people. Uh, during a time where people believe that the economy was getting stronger and we would finally have a chance, those who are in the working you know, middle class, to get uh, ahead, and now we're probably facing another recession because of all of this, it's frightening. Uh, you know, companies are closing, schools are closing. It, it's affecting a lot. And I don't mean to go on a huge rant, but I think there are more implications than simply just people contracting the virus. Um, even if you don't contract the virus, the way the economy is going, and these big movies and these conventions, like these movies, right? Like something like James Bond, right? Um, that money because it's going to lose money either way. They just decided to postpone it because they figure they're going to lose less money by postponing it. But that money doesn't just go to their company. That money gets fed into the economy. So if you have these movies that are not showing and they're not making money or these conventions aren't happening, that's very real. And it's just, yeah. I have nothing positive really to say other than, Wash your hands, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's a very serious take. I mean, I'm I'm glad you, you went the route that you did because, I mean, it is very serious. Um, I, I hope at the beginning I wasn't making light of it. I'm just saying how um, I, I kind of feel as though you kind of I, – I think I, – I tell people this all the time. I don't watch the news because the news is only made to instill you to financially go and do things that if you had full – understanding of the situation you might not really go and do like for example when they go yo i don't know but i'm seeing it and we're supposed to be getting like a nor'easter and then you're like oh my god i have to buy all the groceries all the shovels all the salt you get it and then there's nothing (laughs) right now someone will say to me like well juan what if there is you're absolutely right my point is um Something like you said, Tia, how they don't tell you all the people that have recovered from it. Why? Because you being in a state of panic does what for this? Financial gain. Buy how? You're buying all the, the, um, the gloves, the masks, the hand sanitizers, all the stuff you should normally as a human being have in your house already. You're now spending all this money to get stuff um, to reinforce something that if they tell you, like, hey, you know, so far we've really only seen it from people with really bad respiratory systems that would be more likely to die from the flu, um, you know, more so than anything else. You would kind of go, well, still, I should be a sanitary person, but okay. It's as bad as like, oh, my God, if I get it, this is it for me, you know? And I think that that's what it's spun into, that everyone thought, if I get it, this is it, you know? And it became like, yo, I'm not leaving my house, or yo, don't, don't, don't come over here, you know, and it's like, I don't think it was that, and, you know, I don't think someone from the top really kind of let everyone know, like, relax, calm down, um, it, it in, instead was more so of a global panic to where no one really corrected us when we thought, if I get it, I'm going to die, um, and, and that's why I'm saying, you know, it's more so of we should have been – you know, we should have known the full story rather than just what they wanted us to know. But I'm sorry, go ahead, Tia. 
I was two two things really quickly is that um I think that as Americans, you know, I can't say for the rest of the world, but as Americans, I feel that we felt a little bit invincible because when the Ebola virus came like three or four years ago, it got squashed within like after three patients, it was done. And I was like, oh, okay, phew, something that could have been, you know, could, you know, catastrophic for our country was squashed. And I think we thought that the same thing would happen. Like, okay, it's happening to the rest of the world. But if it came here, like, it wouldn't really get out of hand. And it's, like, it's kind of getting out of hand. Um, and one last thing is a PSA, pretty much. Um, masks do nothing for you. Uh, doctors and CDC have already said it. The only use that a mask does is if you are actually sick. It's not going to prevent you from getting anything. Please stop buying face masks. Doctors actually need them. So, yeah, anyone who's listening, the face mask will not help you. Wash your hands, but you should have been doing that already. It's nasty. Who yes. the hell is out there not washing their hands? Now I'm afraid <laughs> to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way people were responding was like, oh, my God, like, I had to keep hand sanitizer on me at all times. And I'm like, first of all, if you wash your hands regularly, that shouldn't be news to you. Like, stay sanitary. You know, like, don't sneeze around me. Wash your hands on a regular basis. These are all, like, human etiquette 101 things. Like, I, I shouldn't ha- – this shouldn't be news to you. Um, and more so, make sure your kids are washing their hands. Kids are already disgusting when we don't have these diseases existing. But they're even more disgusting when these diseases exist. So it's like make sure your kids understand that digging his finger in his nose and then just wiping it on his shirt is not the equivalent of washing his hands. Wash your hands, you nasty children, um, and you nasty parents also. But, Dom, I'm sorry. I, I, I had to say that. I, I, I'm around too many people with younger kids who sneeze, and I'm like, Yo, did, you just, did you just sneeze and not cover your mouth? Yeah, I'm sorry. You're sorry? I got all your mist in my face. Like, I almost hit you. <laughs> like, I don't play those games. I almost just punched your kid. Do you, come, come get him. Um, so, yes, parents, please be aware of that. I don't want to have to punch a child in their throat, but I will. Uh, but, Dom, how serious do you see this getting for – I mean, I'll even bring it um, closer to this, Dom. I just got a report that Stephen Curry is, isn't playing tonight because he has flu-like symptoms. And if this was, what, five months ago, we would just say, oh, he has the flu, no problem, he'll be back in like a week. Uh-huh. Now it's like, oh, my God, does Steph Curry have corona? He can't show up to games now. So how how much more serious do you see this issue getting before it gets better? Um, I'm I'm with you for the most part of like it's a good way for them to cause mass hysteria because I'm you know I'm from the south and in the south we don't we don't budge uh, on things like this until it legit mm-hmm. happens. Uh, we do have yep. one case here now, one case in Kentucky. People still aren't really too concerned about it too much. Um, I personally don't, knock on wood, I don't get sick. I've I've been sick uh, probably once in the past, like, I don't know, 15 years. Um, Dang. And, <laughs> I'm going to knock yeah, on wood for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, I do think, though, this is a time for, let's say, the movie industry to – kind of get creative and uh, we, you know, we had a show months ago where we talked about, you know, uh, comp- movie companies possibly having links that people can buy if they don't want to go to the theater. Someone's going to, mm-hmm. you know, with something like this, if it happens and it takes, you know, let's say it takes the rest of the year and it gets worse, someone's going to, some studio is going to have to be the one to take a risk and say, Hey, we're going to release it in theaters that are open still, but you can also pay the same price to get um, a download link. Or maybe you pay a little bit more because it's for your convenience. It's at your house to where – because I know, like, with, like, the Dow being down, they said, like, Netflix was going up and Peloton was up because people were in the house. And right. I don't think you have to worry as much about people um, – sharing the link, like going to each other's houses, should I say, because they want to be quarantined in their own house. Um, 
So, I mean, someone's going to have to take a risk possibly and, and, and try to figure a way around this um, because I, I don't think it's, you know, super that serious. Um, I, I know that the the more serious part of it is the fact that we don't have a vaccine. I don't think it's actually the virus itself. I think it's just that we don't have a vaccine for it because we don't freak out as much about the flu because we know there's a flu shot and there's things you can do to combat it. But this one, since we don't have it to combat it right now, I think that's more of the panic is not the actual virus, but the lack of um, things to take. Uh, But I would assume that you would do the normal stuff, like you said, wash your hands, um, Lysol the hell out of your house and your car and, you know, vitamin C and things of that sort because it is, you know, the flu symptoms and respiratory coughing and all that um, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to say it's irrational for people to freak out because it could be very serious. They could have seen firsthand something be very negative. I just know that I'm more, you know, reactionary. I'm gonna take a little bit of precautions because I don't want to be the guy who I didn't do anything to prepare and this it happens. You know what I mean? But I don't want to like go buy up a whole store and then now I'm left with a looking like a doomsday prepper because I thought that the zombie apocalypse <laughs> is about to happen. Um, but yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like people should take the same amount of precautions that they do with the flu. Uh, it's just like, if you don't feel like you should take it, like if you drink out after people, don't do that no more. If y'all share lollipops, don't do it no more. You know what I mean? Don't go kiss random strangers at the bar anymore. Just just wait it out for a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, damn, Don, yeah, really? I, I, <laughs> I mean, Don, Don, we took away, Don just took away my Friday night, but sure, whatever. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think, um, like, like T was saying, it is like affected to, you know, if you're elderly, if you are a young, young child, if you have immune deficiency issues, then that's when you need to. I mean, people know, like, if there's, you know, certain things that they're allergic to, they're going to take precautions to not be around that thing or to take something. So if you know that. You have immune deficiency, and you know that everybody at your job is sick. Hey, I'm calling out of work today. Y'all are coughing. Either I can come or y'all can go home, one of the two. So I just think people need to, like, take a, the right amount of precaution. Just don't overreact because I was looking at a list on USA Today, and there's, like, 30-plus things that are shut down. And I get that, you know, it's it's hit every continent except for Antarctica, so I understand, like, you know, for people that don't understand as much that they're, like, freaking out about it. Um, and you don't want someone who's possibly from another country that's very sick and doesn't want to say anything to come and get everybody sick. So I get some of these, but I, I don't know. It's, it's it's a weird situation. It is for sure. You're absolutely right. And I do want to say this, the reason why the South, it's not flooded with it is because the South has always been raised on home remedies. Your grandmama yeah. or somebody, your granddaddy, somebody say, yo, just gargle salt and you'll be good. And you're like, what? That's stupid. <laughs> you do it. And you're like, how the hell did this work? So that's well, why the South is healthy garlic. right now. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> chew on garlic or something crazy like that, yeah. Or, hey, sleep with a leaf under your under your pillow. What? And then you yeah. wake up and you're like, I feel so much better. But, yeah, I told you. Um, so that's why the South is doing so well. Uh, we up here have to figure out whatever those remedies are and apply it. Um, but, no, seriously, I, I want to make sure I said this before we end the show. Um, with the recent tornadoes that have happened over in Tennessee, right, Dom? It's over in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. um, please, uh, you guys follow comicbook.com. You guys follow Brandon Davis. Even here at Geek Vibes Nation, we have the link up. Please donate. Anything helps. Um, Please help some of these people that were horribly affected. Um, I do feel as though they're not getting enough news recognition. Dom did just tell me that our idiot in chief, I'm sorry, commander in chief was just out there. Um, But I feel as though it needs a lot more awareness than it's getting. 
So please uh, follow Brandon Davis on Instagram or Twitter, specifically Twitter. is more so where I know he's definitely at. And follow us. Um, we are posting the links everywhere. Kanan uh, and, and Dom actually live out in the area. Um, so they were people that could have been affected by it. So this hits close to home for me. So please make sure you guys are out there donating. Anything could definitely help. Um, so please do everything you can. Um, like I said, the links you can find uh, through Brandon Davis or you could find through us. Um, any, like I said, anything will, will definitely help. Thank you, guys. Um, all right, so last two things really quickly. I want us to rush through these. Me and Dom have actually started. Dom, have you finished? I'm so not into this or I'm not into this. Yeah, I love it. Dom, we're doing – I'm trying to get Tia to hurry up and get through it so we can do a review show. Um, <laughs> that show – let me say this really quickly. It was directed by the same person that directed um, End of the Effing World, and I don't know if mm-hmm. you guys have heard me rave about that show. That, Freaking brilliant show, show. Season one was a thousand times better than season two, but that is a damn good show. And I was super excited to see that that same team was coming over, was joining the Stranger Things team to come over and do this show. I thought the show was Carrie. Um, it took me maybe all episodes to figure out that it wasn't. Um, I 100% <laughs> thought it was Carrie. It's not Carrie, but that makes me even more intrigued to see where this show goes. I need a season two, like, tomorrow. Um, so huge shout out to the team of – am I saying the name I'm of the show okay right now? I'm not okay with this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I am not okay with this, yeah. Perfect. So make sure you guys check that out. Tia. Get that show done, girl. I'm starting Westworld for you. You get that show watched. Um, yeah, it's, it's like it's like watching a uh, it's like watching a two and a half hour movie. It's all the episodes are thirty minutes long or under thirty minutes, and there's like seven yeah. of them. Only seven, and one of the episodes see, is only seventeen minutes. Very weird, but it feels like just like that. As soon as it starts, it feels like five seconds later it ends. Um, so it's I not that to long watch it. of a binge, but. I went to watch it today, and then I started watching Amazon Prime 000, so I'll do it tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dom, we got to be on the lookout. Make sure she finishes this soon so we can get this review going. <laughs> this show needs to be reviewed. Huge shout out to um, uh, Cena Nerd. Um, Will actually finished the show, uh, and he and Sarah talked about it on their podcast Uh Sarah didn't seem as big of a fan um, as I assume Will did, but um, huge shouts out to their podcast. Make sure you check them out. I'm going to see if we can get Will on this also. I need as many people that enjoyed it to talk about it as possible. Uh, but our very last topic, we got less than a minute. Uncharted adds Antonio Banderas and a few other people um, to the cast of, um, you know, the Uncharted movie starring Tom Holland and uh, Mark Wahlberg. That Mark Wahlberg movie that came out on Netflix got awful. I just want to say that. I want to make that very clear. Worst thing I've ever seen. Only <laughs> entertainment of it was the fact that it's just Mark Wahlberg being Mark Wahlberg. But really quickly, any interest um, in this Uncharted movie now that Antonio Banderas has been added dumb? Um, yeah, after watching him uh, last year in Pain and Glory, uh, which I thought was a very good Oscar performance, I'd be very interested to see what he does with a action movie. Yeah, I can almost assume he's going to be some kind of villain in this. I, I mean, I think you could easily put two and two together that. Uh, Thea, is your interest going up at all with the recent addition of Antonio Banderas to join Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg? I mean, sure. I really like Antonio Banderas. <laughs> and I really like... Well, I'm just saying, you know, I, I you know, don't know this video game, but I like Tom Holland. I like Antonio Banderas. So, yeah, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so make sure you guys go check that out. Um, uh, well, no, don't go check it out. It's not out yet. Stay tuned for more <laughs> information that we will be providing you. Sorry, I'm trying to hurry up before the show cuts us off. Um, stay tuned for any more information we give you guys about the Uncharted movie. Dom, T, I want to thank you guys so much for, for joining me for another episode of Geek Labs Live. Had so much fun. Please make sure you guys go donate. Again, Brandon Davis is Twitter. Our Twitter, we have the links up. Make sure you guys donate. And stay safe, clean, stay sanitary, stay safe. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week. Peace. Wash your hands. Peace.
<laughs> yes, wash your hands. 